the Rebbe's own father, the Rebbe's father, Rebbe Levik, died at the age of 66 years old. Passed away. The Rebbe's father was a Schneers. You know what that means? He was strong as a bull. He could have lived 100 years. He was an incredibly physically strong man, as was the Rebbe. They broke him. They broke that man. The Soviets broke him. They sent him off into exile. They psychologically and spiritually tortured him. When he passed away at the age of 66, that was way premature. They destroyed him. And the Rebbe said publicly, indirectly, he never said it outright, but he said it quite directly, that my father died like the Shashem. My father gave his life for Yiddishkeit. My father was murdered like the Shashem. Okay, it was a slow death, but my father gave his life for Mesidus, never like the Shashem. And the Rebbe said something very, very powerful. Before I continue, I want to tell you a story. There's a family in Lubavitch called Kaplan. Shmuel Kaplan, the Rebbe is Shlich in Maryland. Rabbi Nachum Kaplan lives in Crown Heights. They had a brother who had now passed away in Tzfas, who was the, the head of the Kiel. His name was Rabbi Leibel Kaplan. He was a Talmud Chochem, he was a god. The Kaplan Mishpacha are Litvish from whom? They're not Lubavitchers, they're Misnagdim. Very elohim, very pious Jews, and also very, very, very learned, very big Talmud Chachamim. The grandfather of the Kaplans was a Jew by the name of Label Kaplan, after whom Rabbi Label Kaplan was named. He was the Rav of Kiev. He was a Litvak. I don't know where he learned this, Labotka, but it was been a big Talmud Chachamim. It's been a big, big God. And he knew the Rabbi's father personally. They used to go to meetings together, because Kiev is also the Ukraine. When there were meetings in the Ukraine, the Rebbe's father was there and this Rebbe Label Kaplan was there. They knew each other. And they were arrested at the same time. He was the Rebbe of Kiev, the Rebbe's father of the Nepe, of Yakutinus, of the Nepe Petrovsk. They were arrested at the same time. And they went through the same cycle. They were ex put in jail, they suffered in jail, they were tried. There was a puppet court, they were found guilty of crime, and they were sent to 55 years of exile. But they were sent to two different cities. This Label Kaplan, listen to the story, this Label Kaplan, knew that Reb Leivik can't take care of himself. He, he doesn't know how. He's not, he lives in Atzilis. He knew this is the Rebbe. He knew the Rebbe's father well. Now the Rebbe's mother joined the Rebbe's father. The Rebbe Tzalchana came to join Reb Leivik. But she didn't come the same day. It took a few months until she organized her house and she closed everything up and then she came to join her husband. What did he eat for those months? How did he survive? This label Kaplan, who was a prisoner himself, would climb onto a moving freight train. If he would leave his city, they'd put him, they'd put him back in jail. He was a fascista. He was an exile. He'd not allowed to leave the city. Every week, he'd climb onto a moving freight train and travel 700 miles to Chile, where the Rebbe's father was, climb off the moving freight train, go to where the Rebbe's father was living, and cook food for him. And then go back, on, go, go back to the train, wait for a moving train, train climb out and go back to the city where he was supposed to be and get off the train. When the Rebbe's mother came to the Rebbe's father, they were living, they, they, there, was, there was a house that people lived in, and in front of the house they had like a little uh, a porch that had screens. That's where the Rebbe's parents lived. They, their accommodations were terrible, terrible, terrible. It looked like in front of somebody else's house, in one room. And the Rebbe's mother comes, and she sees Kugel. There wasn't a Jew for hundreds of miles. Kugel. Kugel. So she says to the lady, where'd you get Kugel from? No, he should have thought he was eating bananas. Grapefruit. Kugel. So the Rebbe's father says, every week a malach comes and makes me food. Now, I don't know if Rebbe Levi knew his, didn't know his name or not. I, I, I think they knew each other. In other words, he probably knew his name, but he called him the malach. Every week a malach comes and makes me food. A kid said, a few days later, Rebbe's mother sees a Yid with a beard. So she runs up and says, you know, there's another Jew in town with a beard. Turns out that was the Malach. This label Kaplan came to make the weekly kugel. Whatever he made for the Rebbe, there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of supplies. What you get, potatoes and onions, what you get in Russia? So the Rebbe's father says to the Rebbe's mother, this is the Malach. This is the angel that cooks me food. So when she came to America, she would say to this man's children, I still remember the taste of your father's kugel. I heard this from one of the Catholics. But I want to tell you the end of the story of this man's life. It's so tragic. It's so upsetting. It makes you so angry. He was a, big, he was a great Jew. He was a great man. 
I, I would call him a big chassid, but the misnag would get upset. But he was a great chassid. He was here to Messiah Nefesh. He made a minion in Kippur. In 1944. He made a minion in Kippur. I don't know if it was Tavshin Gimel. He made a minion. Well, he was Fagolist, Fashik. They found out that this exile made a minion. They were so furious. The KGB, the Vestach, the Seni Yisrael. He walked out of the shul between Mincha and between Musaf and Mincha and Yom Kippur, and they beat him to death in the street. That's how they killed him. They beat him to death. They, a bunch of thugs hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him until he died. Why did he deserve such a thing? Why did he deserve such a thing? Make sense out of it. So the, so the Gemara says. That a Yid who is made Nefesh Kiddush Hashem, his place in El Mesal Yainim is so high that the biggest Sadiqim cannot be in the same room with them. But the Rebbe added a nuance to this. The Rebbe spoke about his father every year on his father's yard site. He would frequently go to the idea of Kiddush Hashem. So the Rebbe said a story that the base Yasef, the base of Karu, who wrote the Shulchan Aruch, he wrote a complete commentary on the Rambam, a complete commentary into it, and his own Shulchan Aruch, one of the greatest Jews who ever lived, was supposed to die on Kiddush Hashem. It was considered a schus. He was supposed to give his life as a carbon for Kaddish Baruch, it was a schus. And he had a malach who came and taught him Taira, a magid, who told him that he is going to be Zeicha to be Makad Hashem Shemai Merab. Then one day the magid came to him and said, You did a really big Aveda, and I promise you that Aveda is Rasa Mitzvah, you lost that schus. You're not going to you're not, you're, you're gonna live, you're gonna die in your bed, Nebuch, you know, you're not going to Kaddish Rambam. The Beis Yosef ended up living into his 90s. And in the, when he lived in the 16th century, that was a very long life. And he lived long enough to write all of these svarim. He wrote the Shulchan Aruch, for heaven's sakes. He wrote the Shulchan Aruch. The, sh- the book that we read every day, what am I supposed to do now? He wrote. So the Rebbe said, think about it. Well, you do something, never should Kiddush Hashem, and he was punished. What was the punishment? Only write a Kesef Mishnah Rambam, only write the Beis Yosef and Tor, and only write your own Shulchan Aruch and a bunch of other Svarim. So the Rebbe says, so Mesiris Nefesh HaKiddush Hashem is greater than writing the Kesef Mishnah the Rambam, the Beis Yosef and the Tor, and your own Shulchan Aruch. That's how powerful Mesiris Nefesh is. But there's another point. And the other point is that a person's Mesiris Nefesh HaKiddush Hashem benefits this world. It doesn't just benefit them. It benefits this world more than having written the Kesef Mishnah, the Beit Yisuf, and the Shulchan Aruch. That's the point. This is also the meaning of these words. Naira lekim imikdashach. The awe of lekim is seen in this world. First of all, the taich which is more pleasant. Mikdashach means mikdash ba'at. You build a shul, you build a yeshiva. You move to Remsen Village and you start your own. You build a little mikveh so women don't have to walk 45 minutes on a Friday night. This is Mikdashacha. This is the sanctuary of God Almighty that brings him into this world in the times of Golas. Right? There's two psukim, right? There's two, the shyness. Hashaychan itam b'teich teirasam avedasa. Hashem rests amongst us in our teira and our avedah. And hashaychan itam b'teich tum oisam. The Abish that ranks amongst us in our tumma. And they are both true. But included in Naira Lekim in Mikdashacha, that in Golas, right? we're talking about Golas. What am I saying about Golas? I'm saying about Golos that Hashem will never abandon us. He can't. This is the nature of our relationship. It's funny to say, and I, I, when other people say it, I get very nervous. Kvayochel, the Ebesh needs us. He's not doing without. That's why. Hashem will always give us another chance. And we will ultimately do the right thing. Mashiach is going to come because we are going to pass our tests, as weird as this sounds, in ways that earlier generations didn't pass theirs. But included in this night of the Kibbeh Megdashachah is the unfortunate reality of Mesir Nefesh Hashem. It's 2024. It's Tav Shin Pedal. This year, the Jewish people were makrib karbonis a lot, as a nation, as a people. The Inyan for Mesir Nefesh Hashem, Kiddush Hashem is very fresh. It's very fresh. And that's what this Pasuk means. It's like the story of Nadav and Aviyu. I told this to you before. I told you last week that uh, when Hashem builds the Beis HaMikdash, He says to Moshe Rabbeinu, V'niktash b'chavaydi. It's going to become holy with my honor. So Rashi says in Pashas Kisisa, which was two weeks ago, Al tikra b'chavaydi, Ela b'mechubadai. 
V'nikdash b'chvaydi means the base of is to become holy with my honor. So Rashi says, do not read b'chvaydi ele b'mechubadai. At the base of Mikdash, it's to become holy with those who honor me. And this means k'doysha. So Moshe Rabbeinu knew that when the base of Mikdash is going to be built, some tzaddik is going to pass away. And that's going to be the covet of the Abishter, which is going to halify the base of Mikdash. And then Nadav and Aviyu pass away in Pasha Shmini. And Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu turns to his brother, and he says, Hu ashadib and Hashem bekrevi HaKadosh. That I'm going to sanctify the base of Mikdash with those closest to me. That Moshe said to Aaron, I thought it meant either you or me, and I see it meant your children. This is the union of Mesiris Nefesh Akidish Hashem. It's an unpleasant subject, but you have to talk about it. In, in America, Dafmereden Vega Mesiris Nefesh. In America, I've talked about Mesiris Nefesh. And that's what these words mean. That the awe of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in this world has to do with the Mikdash Ba'at, has to do with the Mesiris Nefesh Akidish Hashem. And then comes other words. Okay, we'll continue next week in Mesiris Nefesh.